Hey there, it's been quite a while since I've made a video. I've not had time to really do any building until now, so I figured why not indulge myself a little bit, come back to this blank world. There's the fountain I did last time, it's been almost a year since I did it, and try to build something new. I'm thinking maybe a house, but I don't really know. We're just gonna go and build and see what comes out. So stick around if you want to. It's going to be a slow one. Oh, I fell through a hole. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. I think I got to start with the terrain, though. And we're just going to build things by hand because I don't have world edit on this version. Let's see. Where where were those where were those holes? There they are. Let's patch those up before they become a problem. Yeah, I suppose I should probably clarify. Um, I have been doing some building. Um, I just haven't been making videos. I'm really tired of, of making videos, to be honest, so... I kind of stopped. Even with that, building has slowed down quite a bit. I've been doing a lot of it on the bakery server um, because it's it's fun to build with friends, you know? It's nice to, to kind of spend some time alone, though, occasionally too, and I realize I haven't really given myself that opportunity until I came here. So that's what we're doing. Going solo. It's been so long since I've, I've turned on this recording software, sometimes I forget how to uh, talk entertainingly, but to be honest, I don't really care for for this video at least because, well, I mean, I'm not doing it for you. Sorry, <laughs> I'm doing it for me. This is this is a me project, uh, just like that fountain was. I don't know. Is this is this too big? Maybe it's too big. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't even know if I should be using grass for this. I'll probably start with something darker and work my way up. Uh, with a gradient, but we'll get to there eventually. Aha, yes, uh, I should probably get back to what I was talking about. The bakery. Um, Kian, what's the bakery? I'm glad you asked, imaginary viewer. Uh, it's it's a server started by a group of content creators. If you, if you watch uh, YouTube shorts or if you're on Instagram, you might have seen some of their creations. Uh, Painter GG is on there, uh, Snarple, if any of those names mean anything to you. Uh, Claire, Claire's pretty cool. What what have, what have I done? <laughs> I forgot talking and building's kind of hard. I think, I think I can see where this is going. I'm gonna make it a bit of a half moon shape, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, my builds on the bakery. Uh, if you, if you want to see them, I don't think I'm gonna ever make videos on them. Or if I do, it'll be one big long showcase or something. Um, Feel free to log into the bakery, and if I'm online, I will show you around. Then you can walk among the builds yourself, and you don't have to watch me through the filter of a YouTube video try to show you every little detail. I think it's that's more fun for everyone involved, at least in my opinion. Um, okay, I, I think I gotta stop rambling for a bit and get to work. I have a shape. I think I have an idea to go with this shape, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try some things out. You know, building for once without world edit or any kind of special mods is, is kind of comforting in a weird way. Um, it's paradoxical, of course, having to make more permanent decisions has made me feel more okay settling for you know, compromise and whatever. Like, unless I want to redo everything entirely, I'm, I'm kind of stuck with this layout and this terrain, and that's okay with me. Um, it's kind of thrilling in a muted sort of way, I guess. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it's nice. I've got to be honest, that was kind of boring. Um, I find all terrain kind of boring, personally. It's it's mostly just the same thing for me, with or without world edit. Um, but I tried to do something a little bit new with this. I don't really use black concrete all that much, so I thought, why not try to do a gradient with it? And I think it worked out okay. There are certainly better ways to do this. Um, and I do kind of miss uh, slash fill, where I would have made this go a lot quicker. But doing everything by hand is a nice way to reflect on how I do things. Anyways, I figure I should go around and talk about my plan, my master plan. So I'll use this red wool to block out what I'm talking about. So here I think I'd like some kind of dock. I'm imagining these as islands, but they could really be anything. Maybe this is just a balcony, not really a dock. But regardless, there's going to be a platform here. And then working our way up here, I'm going to have a path. I think the house is going to center around here. And then further up this way, there's going to be a bridge that extends to here. 
Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet, but I'd like to have at least some kind of structure up here, perhaps a small monolith or maybe a lighthouse or, or perhaps just a little gazebo, um, and then have a pathway working its way around the outside of this little outcropping or island here to the very, the very top. Um, but the first order of business, I think, is to start on the house itself, so I can use the style I create for it to dictate what everything else is going to look like. Okay, so here's the idea I've come up with. I think I'm going to focus on a Mediterranean style, at least for the beginning. Of course, this is going to involve, involve evolve to whatever the hell I want, which is the idea but I think a Mediterranean style is a good place to start. As you can see, I originally had it set to be diagonal. However, I do want to do an interior on this, which makes diagonal extra hard. So I think I'm going to avoid that for now. I've also left myself a little note here. Um, because this is going to be player scale, I'm going to use these blocks with their intended textures. Um, usually when I, when I build big, I don't really pay attention. Like this doesn't isn't bricks, it's just a color. Um, but since we are in the world and going to be walking around here and looking at these blocks pretty closely, I think using them for their intended texture is probably a good idea. Now, you've probably seen that I have some cracked uh, deep slate bricks here. That does break that rule, however, I'm not going to be looking at the side of this cliff as closely as I am going to be looking at the interior of this house. I've also started to brainstorm the general palette. You've already seen me put that into action a little bit here, but this is sort of the more expanded version, and of course there there are going to be more blocks than these. Um, but I thought I thought I'd start with this and see where it takes me. Now pink might seem like an odd choice, but hear me out. I'm going to try and do some shading on this, on, on some of the flatter areas where I kind of go from pink to uh, to orange, like a sunset. I think that's a neat little color combination and it's not something I've tried before, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I played Build Battle the other day with a friend and that's on Minecraft 1.8 on the Hypixel server and it's given me a refreshed appreciation of how many colors there are in the game currently because 1.8 is not that big. <laughs> it's a small game. It loads so fast. Now I've I've built on 1.8 before. Heck, I played the update when it came out. I remember lining up all the new blocks on a super flat world just to look at them. But looking back now, especially entrenched in the modern versions of Minecraft, it, it's still nice to see how far we've come. I ended up not using the full pink concrete, but I did use the pink terracotta. It's just, uh, I mean, you look for yourself, right? It's a little bit too out there. I think if I had more white, I'd be able to blend it into there instead of into here. But I just don't have enough room, I feel, to do such a contrast. So I've kept the pink terracotta as the final block. And I think it looks all right. It sort of it does what I wanted it to do. It's a little messier than I was originally intending, but I went for this because I thought it suited the sort of hodgepodge nature of the house a little bit more. I have not done the interior all the way. I've tried some things out. I'm having quite a difficult time with the layout for several reasons, but mainly I am not really sure what to do with the staircase. Here's the staircase I have right now. This is probably going to stay. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a bit awkward, but I made it work. However, getting up to the next floor is tough because in here, well, I want this to be a fairly complete room. There's not much room in this room. And if I just break my way down, there isn't that much space down here to make a proper staircase that, uh, that, that fits somewhere appropriate. Okay, I think I can phrase that a little bit better. Oh, look, the hole in the roof has magically been repaired. So the main dilemma I'm having is that this room above is too small to generate a proper staircase that hugs the wall like I'd prefer on this floor, because if I hug the wall on this floor, I will simply end up on the balcony. And so that's what I've decided to do, end up on the balcony. With that choice, a little more freedom came my way, and I had the option to put the staircase on any of these walls. However, that's when problem number two came up. A lot of these walls have holes. I mean, tons of doors, right? And I could block them up, but 
I like the way they look on the outside, so I'm willing to make a compromise on the inside. This side can't do a staircase here because there's a staircase already here. Over here, another window. Here, not enough room with this window or door. <laughs> so I was left with pretty much two options. One, I could place the staircase here and kind of compound this staircase and make them all go up together as one. However, I felt that limited my access to this bedroom over here. So my only other choice really is option two over in this corner. However, I want this to be a kitchen. Therefore, things are gonna, little, gonna be a little bit cramped. So I came up with a bit of a plan. You see, I'm gonna make this a sneaky staircase. It's going to be sort of locked away in a cupboard and you won't be able to tell it's a staircase unless you open the cupboard. So that will, I guess, give the master bedroom, which is what this is supposed to be up here, maybe a little more privacy and also just be cool, allegedly. I mean, I make plans all the time and often they don't work. So just bear with me, this might change. I think it's pretty easy to get misled about how long interiors take. I say this because I was misled by myself again. I do interiors a lot and to this day, I still underestimate how long they take. This one is no exception. It took me about two and a half times as long as it took me to do the exterior of this build and I could keep going because it never feels complete. But at a certain point in time, it is healthier for me to say, all right, Kian, foot's going down. You're gonna have more fun if you just move on. And so that's what I did. Well, the house is done and the plan has changed, I imagine to not many people's surprise if you know me. But before I go on a grand tour of the whole thing, I do have a couple other pieces of the build that I'd like to finish up first. Namely, this bridge over here, this tree, and this lighthouse. Well, it will be a lighthouse eventually. Uh, don't worry, it'll be quick. I just want to talk through them with you instead of simply just cutting to the finished build because, well, I like talking about my building process while I do it. The main reason why I wanted to show you the bridge in particular is because I want to try out a specific technique with the scaffolding that I think is pretty neat and definitely underused in a lot of structural builds, at least ones that I've seen, is you can make a pretty convincing, um, what do you call, latticework structure with the scaffolding just by using it to stack uh, sideways. Now, obviously there's a limit to how far you can stack it. If I break that, that breaks too, because if I try to add more, well, it's just gonna fall. So you have to be cognizant of how far you span your gaps, but it's still, you know, pretty useful. Now, unfortunately, uh, as you might know if you study bridge construction at all, the triangles are a very strong shape, squares are not. <laughs> so this, this, uh, this particular structure is not really uh, conducive to any sort of integrity, but it is pretty aesthetically pleasing and, well, that's all I'm here for anyways. So I think it's fine. Now I want to be clear that I haven't pre-planned any of this, this is all on the fly. But, uh, except for the scaffolding part, of course. So, I'm, I'm going through uh, my ups as well as my downs. <laughs> I think that's a little bit better. If I had the jungle uh, slabs there, I think it, it looks a little bit unsafe and a little bit too tall, especially at this scale. Hmm, I like the color better, but still too wide. I think I have an idea, though. I'm going to move the railings actually inwards a little bit and kind of have an external structure. I've seen I've seen bridges like this made. I mean, having the external structure stick out like this far on both sides maybe seems a little bit overkill for this kind of bridge, but you know what? That's fine. Again, we're here for aesthetics, not necessarily function. Just the look of function, you know, a vague function. It looks too sturdy, I have to be honest. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna reapproach it, but I'm, I'm still gonna use the scaffolding. Okay, that's already so much better. Man, uh, <laughs> it's, it's night and day. I did move it. A uh, little bit uh, one block this way so that it would be more centered on the path and now I just think it needs some really really flimsy looking railings and Yeah, it's it's done. These hanging signs are glorious, but they do take a while to place. That's for sure Yes, okay, very good now. I have now the bridge done. Um, I want to do the tree next This is a this is a fairly simple simple uh, idea um, but the motivation behind it is a little bit iffy. You see, I wanted at least one big tree on this island, but 
given that it's such a small space, you, you can't realistically have very deep soil. So having a big tree in the first place is a little bit unrealistic. But this is Minecraft, so who cares at the end of the day? I don't have any particular references in mind for this tree. I just know I want it to be a vague, a vaguely deciduous uh, looking example of, of plant life. I think the biggest challenge with this tree is, is trying to avoid making things seem like they're being placed on grid lines because, well, they are being placed on grid lines, but that's not the impression I want to give. I mean, trees aren't placed on grid lines, so you want to kind of give the illusion that things are just as angled as they are straight and, you know, compromise through that. Uh, so I'm going to end up with a lot of floating stuff and I just have to deal with that, which is fine. It, it's the way things are and I kind of I kind of like it in a way. It's a little charming. I think that's about as much detail as I can add without it becoming too messy and distracting from the house. I also want it to be slightly shorter than the house, so once we add leaves I think this will be perfect. It's alright, but it's missing some mass, and I'm afraid if I keep adding this, uh, these azalea leaves, it's just gonna look like a blob. So I'm going to try and go underneath with some spruce leaves to simulate sort of the shadow of the tree within itself. Oh yes, okay, I like that a lot. Um, this, this shading also had an interesting consequence in that it made the underside of the tree itself darker as well. So the whole thing's kind of got a shadow, which is pretty cool. All right, moving on to the final thing, this lighthouse. Although I do have to figure out how this path goes up, but that's small beans compared to this. Small beans eaten and enjoyed. Now it's time for the lighthouse for real this time. I have a very specific design that I want to kind of base this off of. It's an Icelandic lighthouse. I'll show a picture on the screen. And I've built a version of it in Minecraft before. However, I want to put a little bit of a spin on it. And by spin, I just mean I want to integrate it more into this style. Now, this lighthouse has two main features uh, besides its color. And one of those features is the sort of balcony thing that juts out of the top. Now, I can sort of simulate that with walls, although they do jut out a little bit far, but I think that's just fine for my purposes here. Uh, the second thing is its really unique uh, lamp up top, which is a little bit harder to imitate. On my actual version of this lighthouse, I used a trick on the bakery to make it so I could have these parallel. However, if I try to do that here, it doesn't work. So I can't use that trick here, and even if I could, I still wouldn't be able to make them float without barrier blocks, which is something I'm okay with, but I do like having my builds somewhat survival friendly. All right, attempt one, eh, not looking so great. I like this bottom part here, but <laughs> it looks like a mushroom. Uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, we'll try again. Moving the top down one and eliminating the white block makes it a little bit better, but I think I'm gonna try one more thing. I think I can do a little bit better even still. All right, so I have a decision to make. Do I want things to be more elegant, but potentially more bulky and top heavy? Or do I want things to be a little less elegant, but look a little bit more in place? And the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, I like this this side better. So I'm going to stick with it. You notice I, I, sep I changed the uh, jungle fence to the birch fence to kind of simulate the whiteness of the top here. And I think that's done a world of difference. So that's gonna be my final design. All done. I added these stone buttons on the walkway to hopefully make it a little bit safer. So, you know, you've got some handholds or at least something that looks like a handhold to hold on to. Anyways, uh, we now come to the interior and you might be thinking it's pretty hard to do anything with a two by two area and you'd be absolutely correct. However, there is still a staircase design that I want to try out, which is just this. You simply stack up trapdoors and go upstairs, stack trapdoors, <laughs> go upstairs, and it doesn't really lead to anywhere, but you know, it fills the space and it gives the impression that this could be a working lighthouse. So yeah, and with that, the build is done. Now I've turned on clouds, gone into F1 mode, let's go on a short tour, starting with this sailboat. Um, the idea was that the owner of this house loves plants, they live on an island, of course they have a sailboat. And I chose yellow and white because it's a nice uh, complement to the house, but also a contrast to the
the dock and the grass and whatnot. I, I attempted to moor it up with some chickens, but this one escaped and I just let him live there. So that's why he's wandering around. <laughs> All right, moving on the way up the stairs, we have sort of a mud room with some uh, plants outside. Uh, this is probably the, mo the least detailed room besides the bathroom, but uh, I didn't really know what else to put in here. There's some shoe storage. In here is the bathroom. I don't care about the bathroom. I decided not to detail it. So we've just got some co-op toilets and a sink and that's it. Moving along, moving along here is the furnace room. Then we've got a nice shag carpet. I used uh, waterlogged stairs to keep the coral alive. Um, under here is a little, you know, dining area, a little secluded or uh, maybe a reading area with a little fold away table. Perhaps this could fold into a bed for guests. In here is a laundry room with some shelves and stuff and a mysterious corridor down to some basement level. Hmm, that's strange. And then another mudroom, although this mudroom has been converted to a lounge of sorts because <laughs> there's not much of a, an exit here. You just kind of exit straight off the cliff. So it didn't seem very practical to keep as a mudroom. The stairs. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bit of a point of a contention. I talked my butt off about how I was happy with the original stair design and then immediately changed it. I, I don't know. I It looked okay from upstairs, but down here it was just, it just faded into the side of the wall and I just didn't like how little of an impact it had. So I decided to move them uh, one block this way and make it too wide and it definitely fixes that problem. And there's enough space up here that it didn't really bother me that much. I just moved this wall and and that actually gave me the opportunity to put another staircase up here, um, which has given me my favorite angle of this whole build, this hallway right here. It's just so full of stuff and I think it looks functional enough, although home builders in the comments, if you're there, please critique me on my interior design. <laughs> All right, before we go upstairs, let's have a look at the master bedroom. Master bedroom take two. I keep rambling on for way too long. I'm trying to keep this concise. So I, I designed this last. It's a little bit rushed. I'm happy with it. This kelp is amazing. Oh my goodness. I have not tried it for like sheets and stuff, but my goodness, it does look kind of like a freshly made bed, at least in my opinion. Uh, here's a desk walking out. We have the biggest balcony on the house and a chair to sit and enjoy the view, although not much view to speak of, but maybe we'll populate this world with other buildings in the future. All right, going on this way, we have the kitchen with a bit of a controversial choice. You see, the 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 uh, cartography table is a fantastic texture on two, or sorry, three of its six sides. However, it's not directional. You can't, <laughs> you can't decide where it goes. It places the same way regardless of where you are facing. So it gets to be a bit of the pain in the butt for a lot of people, including me. Um, but I thought I would embrace that and just use it. And uh, I think the sort of uh, stuff on the cartography table looks kind of like a table setting. So there's like a napkin, maybe that's a weird plate, uh, some forks, <laughs> I don't know. You kind of have to squint your eyes and use your imagination. Um, another thing you might notice about this dining area is that there are no chairs. I didn't include any chairs because I wanted space to walk around. That's all. I'm sure they could be stored somewhere. We could we can use our imagination again. Moving on to the kitchen, we have a sink, a drying rack, some shelves, some ovens that go up into the chimney with the little uh, oven fan, and then a fridge that only looks like a fridge at this angle. If you go look at it at the side, you can see it's pretty pretty obviously just a chain, but. You know, since you're approaching the kitchen from this angle most often, I think it, it it's functional enough. <laughs> All right, up on this balcony is some uh, plant beds with a small tree, some water. Uh, feasibly, this water should be able to keep these crops hydrated. I use the debug stick to hydrate these crops, but I think if I have water there and water there, I'm pretty sure they're in range so that this technique could still work in survival if you ever wanted to create it there. Um, in here is sort of a plant nursery and it extends down, it, it, it connects, sorry, to this hallway here. I uh, wanted to fill it with more in progress plants instead of just a bunch of fully grown plants. So here we have a pile of dirt. There's some seeds maybe 
<laughs> There's a tree, maybe it's being pruned. And then here is a rack of plant plugs. Those are like those little itty bitty tiny plants that you can buy at a garden store that you later repot on your own time. Before I move on to the upstairs, I just wanted to remark, I didn't actually notice this while I was building the tree, but it seems to be casting a shadow here. I think it's because of all the fences and stuff, but I, <laughs> I like that. Now, if you remember my two minute rant about how I wanted to design a secret upstairs bedroom, um, forget all that because I didn't. These are now the guest rooms. <laughs> so here's a guest room and walking down the hallway here, is a, an, an identical guest room. Now, I I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking trying to make this up here a master bedroom when this room right here is like the perfect location. It's, it's nice and secluded already and it's got its own personal hallway, which, you know, I don't know. This is what happens when you build on the fly, right? You come up with new ideas and change things as you go. It's quite fun that way. Anyways, uh, we do have one more floor to explore. Oh, also, before I do that, I just wanted to mention, yeah, there's nothing happening on this balcony. It's too small for anything, really. Uh, I do have a plant there, but I also just noticed, look at the view. Look at that. The tree is directly in the way. In fact, let's go back on the balcony and see, just like, look at the tree. <laughs> I love this. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I've always kind of romanticized the idea of having a tree right outside of a window and you can kind of see it and hear it moving. Um, maybe because that's not how I live. I don't live with a tree outside my window. It's just neat. I also know, though, it can get really annoying when it's windy out. So in some ways, I'm thankful that I can just e experience the joys of that in my imagination. All right, upstairs we go. This is sort of the last area, and it's. Uh, I tried to make it look like this was sort of that kind of uh, ladder that can extend down from a ceiling to an attic. So it's not really meant to be functional because, of course, it doesn't extend, so you just kind of have to fly up there. But anyways, it's a bit of a study up here. I thought, oh, well, this could be like sort of an attic, but it's open. So you, maybe you'll have a, a desk that you sit here and uh, when it's nice, do some work and maybe study plants. Maybe the person who lives here is a botanist or something. Now, before I conclude and wrap up this video, I want to point out something that I found incredibly funny. You see, when I designed the exterior of this house, I put in this dish and antenna setup. And then when I designed the interior, I included absolutely nothing that would use this. There's no TV, there are no computers. Maybe this could be considered a computer, a laptop or something, but that wasn't my intent. Uh, so it's just there and it's useless and I'm keeping it because I think it's cool. So that's the house. I really hope you enjoyed. This video was a blast to make. It's, it's over two months delayed because there was a competition on the bakery server that I participated in that took the entire month of January. I, I didn't place it all, but, but it was pretty fun. I'm really happy with the thing I built. I, I'll show you a little, uh, uh video of it. Uh, while I'm talking here. But the reason I'm still talking to you isn't to tell you about my competition entries or anything. It's because I have a bit of a note that I wrote myself that is pretty relevant to the pattern of this build, and it's about perfection. You see, building almost anything in Minecraft is in some way a compromise. Uh, cubic meter blocks will do that to you. It, <laughs> it's really hard to escape the fact that this game is made of these things. It's not like we can uh, whittle away at detail until something is exactly the way we want. Of course, there are ways to think about it differently that maybe do allow for perfection. Maybe I want to make something cubic that is like this perfect shape. And if it fits Minecraft's parameters, then yeah, I guess it's perfection. But that seems like a reductive stance, so I don't think it's worth taking. Dealing with perfectionism is tough. I think that's a pretty uncontroversial statement. It's hard to deal with yourself when everything must be micromanaged to the smallest detail. I am guilty of that. I do that to myself a lot. And so this video, in a sense, is an exercise in consciously rejecting that. And so this house, in a way, is kept in motion. The, the building process of this house, I mean, is kept in motion, was kept in motion by thoughts of interesting compromise. And in a way that, that, that my crappy bathroom down here is a bit of a, a statement to that end too. 
I could have made this a detailed bathroom. I, I know how to do bathrooms. I, I know what they mean, what, what sort of features they have. I'm sure it would have been fine. But, you know, rejecting that and doing something I think is funny because I wouldn't have found doing the bathroom fun is more powerful and made this build a more compelling piece overall, at least to me. And at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm doing this video for me. And so I think that's the kindest thing I could have done to myself is just let the imperfections dictate the course of this build and they've made me all the more happy with it. So I hope you can take away what I took away from this build here. In fact, I have a challenge for you. Try it yourself. Build something imperfect. Build something you're not 100% happy with. Build something that you stop building once you stop finding it fun. Build something small. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. See you in like a year. <laughs>